This is the windshield and the rear view mirror achieving life work balance with Anne Wright with Wright Solutions. So hopefully you're in the right session. Um, uh, just a reminder, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, mute your microphones and um, use the chat function during the for questions. Um, we will be asking questions throughout the time the whole time. So feel free to use the chat function. Um, and then please turn off your cameras if they're not already turned off, uh, just to save bandwidth for Anne um, and her presentation. Um, we just want to thank you to all the sponsors who are listed on the screen. And um, yeah, and Tricia, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Molly. Good morning, everyone. It is my privilege to introduce Anne Wright. Anne works with people and supports them in creating the life they want. She is a life and leadership coach, associate certified coach, speaker, author, and facilitator. She specializes in coaching new and middle managers. Through her workshop, she assists people in developing their interpersonal skills in areas such as attitude, communicating with confidence, life work balance, productive conflict resolution, meeting management, presentation skills, and team building so they can achieve their goals in life as well as help their company reach their outcomes. Anne earned her bachelor's of science degree with a double major in business and psychology and master's in business leadership degree through Upper Iowa University. She has over 25 years of experience, <clears throat> excuse me, in the areas of leadership management and training and believes people are an organization's most valuable asset. Thank you so much, Anne, for being on. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. I am gonna share my screen. I have some PowerPoints to, for us to use. Hopefully all of you were able to access the handouts. If you were, awesome. And if you have them next to you, we will use them. However, I want to assure you that if for any reason you don't have them, we can get them to you. As well as if you don't, you're still gonna be able to, you can take some notes, we can send them to you. You'll still get plenty out of the workshop. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. All right, can everybody, Molly, can you see the screen and hear me? Yes, I can. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and get started. As uh, Trisha, and thank you, Molly and Trisha, the first thing I wanna do is say thank you to, for inviting me to be here with you, as well as thank you to all of you for joining us. I love the windshield in the rearview mirror. I heard this, this, I guess, comment statement a few years ago, and really what it represents, it's important to look at both. The windshield is our life in front of us, and it's so much bigger than the past, yet it's still important to study the past and history and look where have we been to figure out where it is we're going. So welcome. And when I say this, when I facilitate workshops and things, a lot of times there's a lot of interaction and we'll have some. Feel free to drop in the chat. Are you celebrating anything today? For example, I'm celebrating one being here and my son who is away at college is gonna be home in two weeks and I cannot wait. I'm celebrating that today. And I would ask you, feel free to put yes or no in, in the chat box. I'm thinking it's a yes since you're here. You ever, have, you ever feel as if you don't have time to enjoy your own life, that you are just running from here to there? Well, I want to share with you that I get it. And I am a work in progress, just like everybody else. Some days I get this down pat and other days I struggle just like all of you. So we're gonna talk today about, uh, we're gonna talk about, well, the purpose of the workshop certainly is to give you some ideas. I'm gonna give you a process that you can use and some strategies on how can we begin or continue to achieve life work balance. I'm gonna encourage you to create your best life personally and professionally. We're gonna talk about those seven steps. I'm gonna talk just quickly about top 10 fears that hold people back in their careers. Bernard Marr is the one that it's from him, but I think some of them, the reason I brought this up because I think a lot of them apply to some of the times that we hold ourselves back in working to achieve that life work balance or talk about some strategies. And by the way, in your handouts, if you're thinking, whoa, that's a lot of handouts, we are not gonna get through all of them today. But I really wanted to make sure that I provided to you some things today in the workshop and some things that you can use after the workshop. Because how many of you have been to workshops or conferences and thought that's really good information? 
never to use it again. Not with today, our workshop, the summit is all about. I would encourage you to take at least one thing from every workshop and begin applying it. When I get overwhelmed, I do nothing, but I can do one thing. An action plan at the end of the workshop, I'm gonna, or at the end of our time together, I'm gonna challenge you, invite you, encourage you, whatever you wanna use to choose one thing that you're gonna start with that we talked about. I provided some additional resources that I have found helpful for me. And again, just, I'm gonna encourage you to enjoy this journey because it is a journey. I'm gonna ask you to establish at least one goal that you wanna accomplish over the next 12 months. I'm gonna talk about, you'll be able to identify some tips for saying yes and no to things that matter the most to you. Determine a strategy or strategies that will support you in moving on and begin to develop an action plan because this is just the beginning. The real work's gonna start after the workshop. So as it talks, as we talk about, the journey starts here. I'd like you to take a minute and those of you that have the handout or if you got it in the past, I'm gonna just hold this up. It looks like this. It has some different uh, colors on it. It says the windshield and the rearview mirror creating your best life. What I'd like to do, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds and you can write it down and also feel free to, to drop this in the chat because I love interaction. I want you, I encourage you write down three things that you would like to do or have in the next 12 months and three ways you'd like to feel over the next 12 months for, ex months, oh, for example, I have had a goal for years to write a book. Over the next 12 months, my goal, my big dream, that's the big dream on the sheet, is to get a draft finished. I'm going to finish a draft. And by the way, when I use examples about me, I do not want you to think this is about me. I'm just giving examples to support you because this workshop is all about you. So I'm going to be quiet now and I encourage you to write down three of your goals personally or professionally, or you, they can be a combination, a big dream, and three ways you want to feel. I'm going to give you 30 seconds and feel free to drop in the chat what you'd like. And then we'll come back in 30 seconds. I feel like I should have Jeopardy music. All right, let's come back together. And I know you're thinking, whoa, that wasn't much time. And I understand that. When A lot of times when we do workshops like this, they can be half day or a whole day. Sometimes we create vision boards. Sometimes we go through the steps. But at least you're hopefully getting a couple, getting some ideas on where do you want to go. You need to know where you're going to figure out how to get there. So with that, saying yes and saying no. I'm guessing a lot of you, if not all of you, no is probably not in your vocabulary. And it's a really hard word for me. But you we're going to have to start asking ourselves if we're going to achieve that excuse me, that balance. What do I want to do? What do I need to do, want to do? And they vary work life. And I, when I first said this to my husband and he didn't see the slide and I said, am I shitting on myself? He said, what did you just say? I said, S-H-O-U-L-D-I-N-G. Some of you that uh, attended Michelle Mott's uh, uh, presentation yesterday, she is one of the ones that introduced me to this. And when you think about in saying yes to something, what are you saying no to? But on the flip side, when I say no to something, maybe it's no right now, not forever, but I'm saying yes to something else. Tell people what you can do, not what you can't do. That's really important. So with that, I'm going to go through, in your handouts, you have a seven, seven steps to helping you achieve life-work balance. And I developed this. The acronym is BALANCE because I'm a pretty straightforward person and it helps me remember things. What I like about it is you can use this in the big picture, your whole life. What do I want my life to look like? What do I want the next year to look like? What do I want the next week or what do I want a day to look like? You can use this for a project at work. So you can use it on a when I say small, I mean a single goal or the big picture. That's what I really like about it. 
So as we go through this, I would encourage you to go ahead and write down some things as we're talking through it. I'm going to go through the seven steps. The first one is begin with a vision. You know, follow your dream to reach your goals and follow your goals to reach your dream. And I love quotes. Any of you that have ever been with me before know I am I am just all about quotes. I have them all around. Well, not all around, but I have them in a couple rooms in my house. Begin with a vision. So look at the seven steps and it says, if I could picture my life or career or project day, whatever you're working on. It's not that I couldn't choose a word. It just depends on what you're working on. What would it look like? What would it look like? I did this with my son's senior year. What do I want my son's when I say my sons, it was his senior year. But what do I want my part in that senior year to look like? So what's your vision? What do you want it to look like? So that's the first step. You have to know where you're going to figure out what to do to get there. And feel free to, like I say, drop in the chat if you'd like. So now that you are looking at what your vision is, assess where you are, inventory your time. You have to know where you're spending your time. When I did this and I listed the activities, hey, by the way, I, I like, I have some different television shows that I, I, I like, and I'll get back to that in a minute, but assess where, list where you're spending your time and be honest. And by the way, there's no judgment. This is a safe space. When I coach, when I, I facilitate workshops, there's no judgment. We have to, you know, it's kind of like Dr. Phil, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So I acknowledge, where do I spend my time? Then list, listen to your heart and list your priorities. What are your priorities? And I would share with you, priorities change. When I was in my early 20s, <clears throat> and that's been a while ago, oh, well, not that long ago, but well, maybe. But anyway, my career was a major priority. Priorities can shift based upon where you are in life, career, family, things such as that. And so list your priorities. For example, I worked with somebody that was a supervisor. She listed her priorities. And one of the priorities was spending time with her employees, the people that she supervised. So that's that was one for her. Maybe family is very important. You know, a senior year, granted, I was always involved in his life. I don't mean that. But a senior year, I'm like, okay, I, I've got to really focus on a few things, especially if I'm going to be ready for that grad party. And whoops, too quick there. Analyze and take action. So once you look at it, analyze where do you think you need to be? So where do you need to spend or want to spend your time and need to? And where maybe are you not spending your time? Here's the example of the supervisor I worked with. She said spending time with her employee, the people she supervised was really supervised was really important. Where she was spending her time was not there at all. She was spending maybe 15 to 20 minutes a day and she was spending the rest of the day on other things. And so it it demonstrated to her on paper and I'm a big paper person or you can write it on the computer, or whatever, but I'm a big proponent, an advocate of writing things down. Here's where I wanna spend my time. Ooh, here's where I believe I need to be spending my time. So you have to figure out where you're at. Then, now please know I can spell, I know that the N comes before the C, but I went with the change first. What do I have to change? If you change nothing, nothing will change. So it's really important to figure out what is it that I have to change. For me, when I went back, remember I talked about that television? I really do like a couple TV shows. But what I changed, I don't watch as many. And I choose the, I choose the ones I really like. <clears throat> and I use TiVo and TiVo through the commercials so that I can really just see the, the show. So that I have more time. And then you go into the negotiation. Go back to the end. What... Do you need to negotiate or actually with whom? It's a give and take. So who might you be uh, negotiating with? Maybe a supervisor, maybe your coworkers. If you have the opportunity to have more time to get things done, uh, maybe at your significant other, maybe your kids. I find one of the people that you really need to negotiate with is yourself. I negotiated with me what I'm going to give up so that I can spend more time writing or doing whatever, or with my son, or, you know, faith, family, and friends are pretty much my mantra. So you negotiate and then evaluate and enjoy, celebrate. And if it's working great, if not, go back through the steps. Now that's a really, really quick, quick, uh, when I say overview of the steps, I also would encourage you, my 
email and phone number is on the bottom. If you are working through these after the workshop, please feel free to email me or, and or call or text me. I am happy to answer questions after the workshop. I mean, after the whole summit is over because I want you to really use this because it has certainly served me well. So those are the seven steps. Does anybody have, I'm gonna pause for a minute. Does anybody have any questions about the seven steps, at least how to get started as of right now? All right, well, hearing that, and that was a really quick, like I say, uh, run through of the seven steps, but please, I encourage you to go back and use them. Look at your goals, work through the steps. This is also what helped me years ago decide, honestly, to go back to school and not take another path. It also helped me with my career to take one path over the other. It helped me in my personal life begin doing some things that when I say made me happy, I don't mean it's about me, but to take care of myself. Because you know what? If you don't take care of yourself, you're not gonna be around to take care of anybody else. So achieve that balance. And I would encourage you to do at least one thing for yourself every day. Think about what are some of the fears that hold people back? Now, he said, Bernard Shaw, he said, these are the things that hold people back in their careers. But I think there's some truth to this in holding you back from achieving life work balance. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. You know, fear, false evidence appearing real. I found this on the internet. And I think that is so true. Now, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is not the enemy. Few monsters really warrant the fear that we give them. So some of the fears that hold people back in their careers, and like I said, I think they can apply to, to moving forward. Fear of failure. What if I try this and it doesn't work? Well, you know what? I fail probably about every day. You just get right back up and try something different. You have to try things. And I have found that we live to regret the things we don't do, not the things we do do. So it's okay to fail. Just learn from it. Fear of rejection. What if we try something and we're rejected? Well, we need to just move on and surround yourself with positive people. Fear of the unknown. What if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? I said that to somebody, what if it doesn't work? And my friend said, but what if it does? So try it. Talk to people. You can research it. Fear of being out of your league. This is more for career. Sometimes people feel they don't have the skills. All of you have more skills and knowledge than you give yourselves credit for. Go for it. And if you do need to acquire some knowledge and skills, either people have gone back to school, they've taken workshops, they've read books, and there's some books at the at the end of the workshop that are, are good, I think, to help people with mindset. Loss of freedom. Oh, what if I want to do something? Like, for example, write this book, or I helped, or I supported one person in going back to get her Master Gardener's cert certification. She's always wanted to do it. I said, well, what's that stopping you? She said, well, what about this? What about that? What if I don't have enough time? She was afraid of losing her freedom of time. What was worse is not achieving your goal. And I'm excited to share with you, she graduated from that class about two weeks ago. And it wasn't about me. It was about her taking responsibility and taking the next step. Fear of judgment. How many of you fear judgment? What if people think that I'm being selfish for saying no to something and yes to something else or not being involved in everything? We have this busy, 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 busy mantra. And I don't know about you, but I think that something that can come out of this 2020 is figuring out what is really important to us. And by the way, right now, achieving life work balance, some of you, if maybe many of you are still working at home, how do you achieve that? What are those boundaries? We're gonna talk about that in just a few minutes, some strategies on how do you, how do you establish those boundaries so you can stop working and start living in your personal life or not let your personal life fall or kind of, tumble over too much into your work life. How do you make that, those boundaries, if you don't have a home office and things such as that? So there's so many, um, so many variables. Fear of something bad happening. Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. What I think prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And many times the things that we prepare for never even happen. So if I acknowledge it and prepare for it and know I can deal with it, I'm not really afraid of it anymore. Fear of being, being greedy. That goes be, fear of being greedy with your time. And we all have 24 hours, seven days a week. Is it greedy to take some time to be active or to exercise more? No. 
it, I don't, I personally don't think it is. And by the way, you don't have to agree with, with my, my thoughts, but I don't think it's greedy to take care of yourself. I'm, and I'm working to be more active. And by the way, I don't really like to exercise. So I've changed the word exercise to being more active. So if I take a walk, I'm good because I was more active than I would have been. And that is not being greedy. Is it greedy to do something nice for yourself? Maybe it's five minutes of reading. Maybe it's five or 10 minutes of just taking a breath and, and taking time. But if in those five and 10 minutes that you take for yourself, you're probably going to be re-energized and have more to give to other people. I know that we're pulled in many different directions. Work, kids, especially with kids at home or, or hybrid, take a breath. You don't have to be perfect. It's okay. Get some support. Fear of not being perfect. I kind of talked about that. Be perfectly imperfect. Nobody's perfect. And that's okay. And I was doing a workshop and I'm going to have to share this with you. One of my cats got sick right behind my chair. I'm like, oh no, I hope nobody heard that. But on the upside, I'm a real person. I, I'm not perfect. And I think that's what makes all of us be able to relate to each other and to really work on life work balance. So fear of disappointment, feel the fear, do it anyway, just do it and try it. So let's talk about some strategies. And these are some things that I believe will support you in, in helping achieve that life work balance. One of them is our own mindset. Success begins with mindset. And there's a book and I've listed it at the end of your, at the end of your handouts by Carol Dweck. She talks about, do you have a fixed or growth mindset? Are you fixed? Is it just going to be like this? It is what it is and there's nothing that can change. Or do you have a growth mindset? Maybe I'm not where I want to be, but I can get there. And so think of it, you know, maybe I'm not good at this. Well, what am I missing? Or I'm awesome at this. Maybe try thinking, I'll use a different strategy. My plan, sorry about that. I'm awesome at this or I'm on the right track. My plan didn't work. I give up. No, I'll use a different strategy. And I would share with you that my son, when he was in high school, he swam junior year, wanted so badly to earn his varsity letter. And he missed it by a second. He said, well, I guess I'll just have to earn it in track. So he had a growth mindset. I'll try a different strategy. And I really appreciate that. And I think that helps us also with our life work balance. What am I going to change? How can I grow? What can I do differently? And by the way, I want to share with you, I know sometimes we feel like we have to do it all ourselves. And I, I had that mindset for a long, long time. I thought I have to do it myself. I don't. Yes, I have to make the, take the actions and make the effort. But here's the bottom line. We all need support. And, and I have learned it's okay to ask for some support, some thoughts, some guidance. It does take a village. And I'm so grateful that there is a village here. So you have a growth mindset. Mindset. Another strategy. Are you in the 90% or the 2%? One of my friends and I that I met through uh, my coaching uh, training school, she and I became friends. We've been friends for about four years now. And we laugh sometimes when we talk. Okay, she said, I'm going to the 2%. Here's the 2%. That's the negative part. That's our five minute pity party that we have every once in a while. And everybody's allowed it. Yet I encourage you to stay on the 98%. It's a strategy. It's about attitude, about what you're thinking up, your thoughts become actions. And that's what moves you forward. And it is a choice. And it's not always easy. I am not here to tell you it's always easy, but it is possible. So stay in the 90 or the 98%. Some of the other things, clarity. One of the reasons I, I provided the seven step process and they create your best life worksheet is for clarity. Clar finding clarity really is a strategy. What is important? When I decided to go back to school instead of run for a major volunteer position years ago, I wrote down my vision for my life and it became very clear which path I needed to take. You know, it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland. You know, she, you know, went down the rabbit hole. She was zipping all over Wonderland and she came to a fork in the road and she said, hmm, I wonder which, ro uh, which road I should take. And the wise Cheshire rabbit was sitting in the tree and he said, well, Alice, 
where are you going? She said, well, I don't really know. And he said, then it really doesn't much matter what path you take. And I love that, that analogy, because when we're clear on what we want our project or our life to look like, it will become clear what to say yes to and what to say no. And like I said, when you're saying no to something, you're saying yes to something else. I know that my sister shared that Oprah Winfrey said a long time ago, you can have it all. Maybe it's not at the same time. My son's senior year, I'll, I'll use this as an example. I love doing what I do. Yet, honestly, I took a little bit, I took a step back and I maintained. I did not work to grow because there were things that I really wanted to do and make sure that I was very present. And it was a choice because it was very clear. Once he went to college, uh, my priorities changed and some time opened up and I filled it with some things that I had been putting off. And so it's a balance. It's a life work balance. And by the way, I really believe it's a life work balance. Note, I didn't say work life. I said life work. So with that, let's talk about some tips. And these tips that are on the PowerPoint, these are in your, uh, most of the tips are in your handout. So you don't have to fast and furious write them down. This one, I don't believe it. I don't believe this one is, but I love Stephen Covey. From one of his books, he said, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. In other words, put the most important things first and keep them clear. Sometimes people will write it on a, a post-it note or an index card and actually put it right in front of them so they see it every day. Some people will put it on their phone. Do whatever works for you. So some of the life work balance tips that are on your, your handouts are priorities change, like we just talked about. Sometimes priorities change, they change uh, daily. So that's important. Budget your time. How much time do you need to spend and can you spend? And with whom do you need to negotiate? Change what's working. And I have found this also for life work balance. Work on the most challenging areas of your day or work when you're at your prime. How many of you are, and you can either put this in the chat or just think to yourself, how many of you are morning people? I do my best work in the morning. Therefore, I really, I try to work on my most challenging projects first when I'm more alert. Some people are more afternoon uh, people. They get their best work done maybe late morning, early afternoon, or mid-afternoon. Some people are night people. Now, at your job, if you're working during the day, you're probably going to have to choose a morning or afternoon, but that's okay. Make a will-do list. One of my friends said this, will-do. I'm like, oh, I love this. So I have a will-do list. I have a to-do list too, but I have a will-do list. And I also have a dry erase board that I got a couple months ago that's really helped me because I see it and I check it off. I am a big checkoff person. Utilize a calendar. And I encourage you, a strategy, put your life in that calendar. It's not only about work uh, appointments, and work is important, but so is maybe activity, maybe a date night, maybe time with your, your friends, maybe with your child, maybe time for you. I didn't have a lot of time this morning, but I took 15 minutes to be a little more active. And I'm now doing wall push-ups instead of regular or the, the traditional push-ups, but it works. But I have a will-do list. Utilize a calendar. I'm a big calendar person. And like I said, put it in your calendar. Keep an idea folder. What's some things that you want to do? Put it in a folder. Either write it or on your phone. And I know you've heard this, and this is a tough one for me. I don't sleep very well, but get enough sleep. That will help you keep things in perspective. A tip, learn to say no. No graciously. Be ruthless with time, gracious with people. Alan Lakin said that, not me. Make time for what's really important. Go back to your creating your best life, your vision, and list your priorities. What's really important to you? What are some of the most important things? And, you know, I feel like we've gone over a lot of things really, really fast. But I think this is important. Don't get hung up on remembering all these, you know, tips and everything. Take time for the ones that work for you. Look at your list. Choose one or two. What works for you? If it works, keep it up. If it doesn't, try something different. Laugh often and at yourself. I've learned to laugh at myself. And most of the time, people are laughing with you. They're not laughing at you. Celebrate your successes. Celebrate the, the big ones and the small ones. I try every morning to go, oh, thank you for this, or 
Good job. You took 15 minutes this morning. It's a start. Strive for excellence, not perfection. I think that's really important. In creating your best life, you know, as Steve Jobs said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living somebody else's life. Live your own life. You know, it talks about time is precious and you can't get it back. That's one thing you cannot get it back. If you're depressed over someone else's life or letting someone else control your life, you're wasting your life. Take control of your life and make the best of it. Again, it doesn't mean it's easy, but you can do this. You can do it with your village. What, so you might be thinking, well, whew, what are my next steps? The real work begins after this workshop. So I would encourage you to look at the tips, choose one or two, look at the seven steps, decide if that's something that you want to do. If you need some support working through it, please let me know. I am happy to work, work through it with you, truly. I, I do that with people complimentary uh, many times. So I, I'm happy to do that. Or even if you just want to ask a quick question. So I'm going to ask you to think about, and on your handout, you can even write it down. Think about what, I'll give you about 10 seconds. What's your biggest takeaway from what we talked about, what we jam-packed into this this morning? So take about 10 seconds. What's my biggest takeaway? Feel free to drop it in the chat if you want to. Biggest takeaway. In your handouts, I would encourage you, you can even think about your biggest takeaway or based upon what you learned today or what we talked about, what are you going to work on first? What Because you've just spent, you know, talking about time, you've just spent about 35 minutes here and you're spending time at this summit, which thank you for investing in yourself. What are you going to take with you that will support you in moving forward and achieving life work balance. So take a take, like I said, in a workshop, we would take a little bit longer, but take a, about 10, 15 seconds. I'm gonna start my timer. So 10 or 15 seconds, your biggest take, or what are you going to work on? What will support you? All right, so in that, these are also listed in your handout. I, I'm also a big believer in books. I love books. I have books. We have books everywhere. We have books in in different rooms, We in the, in the car, in the living room. I don't think you can have too many books. There, um, the books, Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo, the mindset book, Train Your Brain and Triggers. Those are all great books. The Dream Bucket List, that is actually a handout in your packet. It's 99 things you want to do that you can put either on a bucket list or a dream list. The first 10 are pretty easy to come up with, but I challenge you to come up with all 99. And then at the, at the end of it, it says my top, however many things I'd like to do in the next how many years. And I, the reason I purposely, if you're thinking she forgot something, no, it's not up to me to say the top 10 things in the next five years Maybe it's the top three things you want to do in the next year or three things in the next three years. It's about you. So I encourage you to sit down, take a cup of coffee or tea or hot chocolate, whatever. Grab your favorite beverage, take some time and write down what you want to accomplish. So those are some different resources that should help you. You know, not everybody will understand your journey and that's fine. It's not your journey to make sense of. It's yours. You know, I have a, I, my quotes that I talked about, I have one that says risk. You know, you're never going to find the ocean if you don't lose sight of the shore. And I love that quote. So with that, we are at 930. I want to thank you so much for taking time and investing in yourself and for taking these, these tools, activities away. So I'm going to be, I'm going to stop sharing and I would open it up for questions. What kind of questions does every do people have? We've had a couple come in. Um, the first one, do you have tips on being present during the appropriate times, uh, struggling with work, thinking about work, bleeding into personal time, uh, work-life integration or separation? 
Yes. And if I'm understanding correctly, meaning you're thinking about work, 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 work on your personal time and it's interfering. And sometimes you're thinking about your personal time when you're working. A co- one tip that I might suggest that has helped me at the end of the day, and if I, when I answer this, if this doesn't address what you wanted, please tell me. At the end of the day, if you have several things that you're like, oh my gosh, I still need to do this, this, and this. If, they, if, they're not a, if it's not a crisis and they don't have to be done that day, I would encourage you to write them down. These are the things that I need to, to remember and to do maybe tomorrow or whatever. So you've written them down. Now you don't have to worry about remembering them. Sometimes in a workshop, depending upon what the workshop is, I will actually have people do that at the beginning. Write down the things that you are worried about or concerned about. You've written them down and then I'll actually have them put them away and I'll tell them this workshop is now for you. You don't have to worry about any of those things you wrote down because they're written down and you can go back to them and refer to them. So write them down and then move and focus on who you should, who you want to focus on. Did that, I'm going to look at the chat. I want to, Catherine, did that address, oh, you know, the other thing, work bleeding into your personal time. The other thing I wanted to address, if this is especially for those of you that are working at home, I actually, over the summer, I, or actually from March till about August, I had a work from home face, private face group, Facebook group for some of my friends that were really struggling with, with exactly what you said. If you have a separate space, it's easy, easier, not easy, easier to shut the door. When you have a spouse maybe working at home, a child or children working at home, you're working maybe at the kitchen table. How do you separate that? If at all possible, decide on an ending time. My work end time, and I actually, I I coached somebody through this too, because she was struggling with this. Her work end time, five o'clock. I said, can you move your laptop at five o'clock when you're finished to a different room, different part of the house? And she said, well, well, yeah, I can just close down and I can actually move it wherever it was. So if you can put your laptop out of sight, out of mind, I was in the habit, and I'm going to share this with you because it shows I'm a work in progress. I used to leave my laptop out and I can't remember, I moved it upstairs or whatever, I working on a project. I went to check it, I'll bet five times that night. I didn't know how much I was actually on work until I moved my laptop. So that is a strategy, write write things down that you're concerned about forgetting or that are on your mind. Of course, remember where you put them and put your laptop somewhere else. Literally remove the temptation, if at all possible. When you're thinking about it, try to go, oh, that's written down or write it down on your phone for the next day. Did that answer your question? Catherine, did that help? hope. She says yes. Oh, yes. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, uh, let's uh, see. Other cool. We have a few more minutes. Other questions or comments or biggest or action steps. If people don't have questions, what are you willing to share that you're going to actually take action on? We've had a couple other questions come in. Um, you talked about fear. Is there one fear that you see more prevalent in clients you work with? The one that comes to mind, honestly, the most when I work with clients, failure, fear of failure. What if they do something and it doesn't work? We talk through what's the worst that could happen. And we talk through what do they want to accomplish and what are they willing to do to get there? It's probably fear of failure and judgment. Those are probably the two big ones. And by the way, I struggle with those too. I don't like to be judged. So yes, those are probably the top two that I find with my clients. What else, Molly? Um, guilt is real and ever present. Guilt from homeschooling and not working. Guilt because work is consuming my life since pandemic. Um, 
Do you have tips for dealing with that? Give yourself some grace. And I'm encouraging you to know you don't have to do it all. I would encourage you to list maybe in work or maybe in homeschooling. I thought I heard you say maybe not working, but homeschooling. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to take a guess that the most important thing right now is to make sure that the, your children, child or children, get what they need for school and in their development. And I'm guessing that's your priority and give yourself some grace that you are, you're doing the most important thing. I, I you know, I, I love what I do as a career, I, I do. But I also learned that it's not the end all be all. And you know, this is, the older I get, the more this is true. I really believe at the end of somebody's life, you're not going to say, I wish I'd worked harder. I wish I'd worked more. And if I've learned one thing through this pandemic, I'm not going back to being as busy as I used to be. I, I really am not. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to do things. I'm just, what's really important. And so I, I encourage you, just give your, cut yourself some slack. It, it's, and by the way, your kids aren't going to be homeschooled forever unless you choose to. They're going to go back to school. They, they are. I know I have, I have some friends that are doing the happy dance because they're even going back part time. And it's not that they don't want to help their kids. They just want their kids to have the best. So I hope that helped. If you have any other questions or want to talk through it, please call me or, or, or email me and we can, we can touch base and I'm happy to work through it with you. Complimentary. I mean, not, you know, any other questions as I look at the time, we've got two minutes left. Yeah. Uh, I think you might have answered this one. Um, how do you deal with feeling, with fear of failure, like you're failing at everything because you can't have like full attention? Um, I know like right now we're just kind of dealing, we're, our brain is like not all there <laughs> and can't focus. So do you have tips on that or? I'd go back to writing down what's important and if possible, chunk your time. My mind, uh, sometimes I think squirrel should be my middle name because my mind is here and there and this, and, th and I'm inundated with emails. Look at this program. Look at, I'm like, stop, write it all down and choose what is really important. And if at work, you're just being pulled in a, a million directions, I'm hoping that you have a supervisor that you can talk things over with and to decide what is the most important. I think I also heard somebody uh, write, I'm back to doing it all, not delegating. You, it, most people can't do it all, I can't. And I, 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 I really just hate having to admit that, but I just can't do it all. And so, you know what? If the dishes have to wait till the morning, they have to wait till the morning. If now, granted, my son is now at college. However, if he's able to talk, I'm last night, we've been trying to connect for a week and I texted him and I texted him and he said, I can talk now. And I can assure you there was nothing more important than talking to my son last night, nothing. And I'm glad I did because he's really stressed about a paper right now. And so write it down, talk it over with, whoever it is, is in a position to maybe negotiate with you. If you are on your own, if you are a single parent and trying to do it all, I encourage you, find a couple people you can talk it over with or give me a call and we'll at least talk through some strategies that will focus on you. Perfect, so, thank you, you Anne. I, I hope I answered that. I know we're at 940. I just wanna say, Thank you so much for being here. I really do wish you the best of luck. And I really meant if you want to talk over anything or have questions, please let me know. I went into coaching to serve people and I don't have it all figured out, but we'll figure it out together. <laughs>